Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions. When it comes to crypto regulation, there's a lot happening around the globe. I mean, in UK, we have consultation paper out, then EU has MICA, and on the other hand, President Biden has also signed executive orders in the past, and India can definitely pick some hints, and that is what we're going to discuss with our guests in today's episode. This is Coffin Crypto. I'm Arun Singh, a very warm welcome. We'll start the show with big stories of the week. Ethereum's 10th shadow of fork or a test is live. Ethereum is continuously running tests ahead of the merge. We explained its shift from mainnet to beacon chain in one of the previous episodes as well, which is being called the merge. This will shift the network from using the energy intensive proof of work protocol to proof of stake. They'll continue to run mainnet shadow forks until the merge. Moving on to the next story for the second consecutive month, the Federal Reserve raised US interest rates by 0.75%. This as an effort to combat inflation. This follows a similar hike in June could, and could keep pressure on markets including cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, etc. Moving on to the next story, while investing heavily on Metaverse, Facebook's parent company Meta Platforms Inc. has issued a gloomy forecast after recording its first ever quarterly drop in revenue. Its Reality Labs unit, responsible for developing Metaverse-oriented technology like the VR headsets, reported sales of $452 million down from $695 million in the first quarter. Moving on to the last story, as per sources quoted by Reuters, a key regulatory panel in the US House will delay consideration of a stable coin regulation bill for several weeks. Part of the delay is due to changes sought by the US Treasury Department, which generally supports the bill but wanted stricter consumer protections tied to wallets where people would hold their digital assets. Now, what is happening in the other parts of the world when it comes to crypto regulation? Let's give you an explainer on our coffee wall. Let's go. So major countries around the world are talking about regulating the cryptocurrency and many legislations are already in the pipeline. So we thought we'll give you a roundup of what is happening around the world when it comes to regulation and what can India learn and pick, which becomes our topic of discussion with the guest. But let's begin with European Union. On 30th of June, the European Parliament agreed upon a new law to regulate cryptocurrencies, the Markets in Crypto Assets Law, that's MICA. With this, EU will bring crypto assets, crypto asset issuers and crypto asset service providers under a regulatory framework for the first time. Remember, the bill's still not law. The main features of the law have been agreed to in principle by lead negotiators, but they have yet to publish a full text. Once the text is available, governments and lawmakers at the European Parliament will have to make sure the demands were met. That will happen through a series of votes and under the new rules, stable coins like Tether and Circles USDC will be required to maintain ample reserves to meet redemption requests in the event of mass withdrawals. Now UK, a consultation paper is published this Thursday and the UK Law Commission, a statutory independent body tasked with reviewing and updating the law wants to extend the country's property rules to cover crypto and non-fungible tokens and several enthusiasts are happy about it. The commission steers clear of cryptocurrencies that function simply as means of payment. Remember, here in India as well, a lot of investors and enthusiasts have also been pointing out similar sort of points that, you know, we don't want it as a mean of payment, but classify it as an asset class. But now, coming back to this story, it focuses on working on the trade value of the digital assets. So UK Law Commission sees crypto as a new type of property. Parliamentarians in UK are also planning to introduce rules for using stable coins. The rules are part of a long-awaited financial services and markets bill, which is aimed at strengthening the UK financial system post-Brexit. So there's no blanket ban on cryptocurrencies in the UK, but it also doesn't have a financial regulatory regime for crypto assets just yet. In May 2022, when Terra USD crashed, Bank of England published a consultation paper that outlines a strategy to reduce risks for investors holding 
stable coins. Now let's move on to Singapore now. Singapore is considered to be a crypto friendly nation but remember three arrows capital, a crypto hedge fund company which recently collapsed and Zipmex an exchange that halted withdrawals are all Singapore based. A Singapore, so Singapore wants to tighten laws for crypto players in the country. The Central Bank of Singapore and the Monetary Authority of Singapore which is MAS have planned to come up with a new set of regulations for Bitcoin, other cryptocurrencies and digital assets. These will take enforcement action if, if any entity is found to be conducted, conducting illegal activities. The Central Bank of Singapore will also release plans to make the country a hub for Bitcoin and other digital assets. In the end, we'll talk about the USA. In March 2022, President Biden issued an executive order calling on the government to examine the risks and benefits of crypto assets. Major focus of this executive order was to prohibit illegal crypto activity. As a result of this order, the US Treasury Department recently published a fact sheet outlining how it could work with foreign regulators to address the cryptocurrency sector. However, legislation being drafted by Democratic and Republican leaders of the US, uh, US House uh, Financial Services Committee will not be considered by the panel until September and this is what Reuters sources have confirmed and I also told you this in today's big stories as well. So consideration of a stablecoin regulation bill is delayed for several weeks. Uh, so we'll now get into a, a discussion which we have our guests with us. Uh, we have Preeti Kurana and Ajit Kurana. Preeti Kurana is Director of Advocacy and Regulation Clear. Ajit Kurana, Founder of Reflexical. A very warm welcome to both of you. Mr. Uh, Ajit Kurana, I would, I would begin with you. You know, you've heard all these countries doing several different things. What can we pick as a nation, as, as India is also on, the, on a similar path? So as a nation, we have to decide the country's priorities. We have a law called FEMA, hmm. which governs how currency is moved abroad. Hmm. So to try to mimic a country like Singapore or USA, which actually has relatively free flow of its currency across its border, will not work for us. I think the easiest thing, given that we have so many constituents hmm. who are not necessarily working in conjunction with each other, is to do two parts. Number one, recognize this and classify it. I think the best example is from MICA. Instead of classifying into 5, 10, 15 types, non-fungible, fungible, they said basically utility token, money-like token, that is e-money token and asset-linked token. Simply this. Frankly, I think this is beautiful. All cl clarification comes in. Second thing to do is that instead of waiting for an almighty law to come which the parliament will enact, let us look at the existing laws such as the RBI Act, SEBI Act, PMLA, FEMA, and other such, maybe Income Tax Act has already been done, mm -hmm. and just get them to recognize the existence of crypto. Once you do this, we are on the path to being at par with some of the best regulations around the world. Sure, and Preeti, you know, we've of course listed all these uh, regulations which are uh, in a process in other countries. Uh, are there any India-specific regulations, as few have been pointed by uh, Mr. Kurana here, are there any India-specific sp regulations that you think we immediately need to work on so even though you know now the income tax act has a mention of virtual digital assets yeah. yet it's not clear enough so you know firstly there has been a lot of confusion whether this gives it legal standing or not i think all of that needs to be sorted rbi's discussion paper which has you know been talked about it's not there yet Essentially, whatever law they've put together, it is, you know, it has several gray areas. So I think on an immediate basis, perhaps in the current financial year, they need to classify, I mean, clarify a lot of things, uh, you know, uh, precisely in, uh, in the sense of uh, how to estimate the cost of acquisition, for example. So it's not very clear what exactly constitutes cost of acquisition, what all could be included. Hmm. Uh, and let's not wait for, you know, things to go to courts and then, you know, wait for uh, jurisprudence and all of these things to come through for us to develop an understanding of what these things are. Then essentially, uh, you know, if you look at the US and UK laws so far, hmm. they, they've they decided to treat these as capital assets. So there is capital gains, there's benefit of setting off losses. So, you know, things have been made super simple 
uh, and they've been clarified precisely in the law. I think that's the first thing. Uh, so I'm hoping in the next budget, which is not you know, so far away, they would have started preparation. So it would be a good idea to, you know, look at all of these gray areas. I, I was just uh, going to ask you, what can we pick from these countries? Of course, you mentioned one thing, which is capital gains. You know, how, how these countries are also counting it under capital gains. Uh, if, if there's any other point you think that we can pick from other countries and which can suit our needs here as well. Yeah, absolutely. So we've, you know, we all the laws that we've drafted so far are more out of suspicion and fear yeah. rather than any kind of prudence. So yeah. the first thing is to sort of, you know, consider whether these can be reported as capital gains. We spoke about that. And then to talk about loss set off because, mm. you know, essentially with uh, tedious regulations with no loss set off, like a very small uh, bracket which is available, you're literally, you know, you're forcing people, developers, exchanges to actually yeah, move outside joke. India. Yeah. So I think all of these need to be looked at and essentially on GST. So, you know, people are concerned whether GST is going to come through. There have been talks about uh, what rate to apply, it could be 18%, it could be 28%, and then there's, you know, there's so much confusion around when is it coming and how is it going to impact us. So mm. I think all of the, that clarity needs to emerge, and now that they've said that, you know, you can calculate, exchanges have to do these complicated compliance, they need to convert into primary VDAs, but, uh, you know, you may not have enough data around all of this. Mm. Uh, and... Um, I mean, in the sense that we are now so tech savvy, we've seen how digital payments evolved because there was so much better regulation. Right. So instead of fear, you know, if they decide to look at prudence, if they, uh, so they picked up a lot of our tax laws from the UK law itself, which is actually far more clearer. The definitions are spelled out in a much better fashion. Hmm. I think it sort of needs a relook and I'm hoping in the next right. six months something comes through. Uh, Ajit, uh, I mean, we've listed different countries here. Which country would you think is, is the most crypto-friendly? So it has changed. It was Estonia, it was Malta. For a very short period, it became Singapore. Today, amongst the major nations, so I'm not looking at the financial havens like British Virgin Islands, etc. But I think amongst the major nations today, it is probably the United Arab Emirates. And that's why we see the brain drain also happening and law of exchange, Indian exchanges especially leaving the country and then going to the UAE. Um, uh, uh, very uh, that is not entirely correct. What okay. has happened is these countries were, these exchanges were never incorporated in India. The brain drain you are referring to is happening, but it is just the residence relocation of the founders of these exchanges. These exchanges were never re registered in India to begin with. Oh, like that. Yeah, sure. But these are Indian exchanges. You know, and they are making Dubai as their base. And if we had a regulation here, of course, they would have been settled here. Would you agree? Absolutely. Yes, right. I agree. In fact, I think that other than your theme, which is which countries can India learn from, hmm. India should also learn from India. Namely, classify this at anything. Let's say an asset and then learn how you are regulating other assets in India and apply the same rules here. I think that is a great easy point to start. And you know, when we look at Singapore, you think they've learned the lesson tough way because, of course, they were also very crypto friendly. Uh, but then all of these uh, protocols failing and then now they are thinking to redo it a bit. Do you think they've learned the lesson tough way and probably we, can, we have some lesson to learn from, from that story? Interestingly, I have spent uh, time in Singapore a couple of years as CEO of a crypto exchange in Singapore. And I must say that Singapore's priorities are a little different. So they are not worried about dollarization, which RBI is worried about. They are also not worried about tax evasion. Their primary concern turned out to be consumer protection. Hmm. There was a point of time when things went out of hand and every taxi, every bus stop, every bus in Singapore would have an ad of some crypto provider. Hmm. And this created a lot of hue and cry because we, it was felt that you, know, that you would be preying on the innocence of the gullible investors and that is where they cracked down and said you just can't do any of these things so sure consumer protection remains a very big issue even for india but india has other big issues such as uh, tax evasion uh, capital flight etc so we can't learn from singapore because they had to take an extreme action for consumer protection mm, okay uh, last quick question from preeti here uh, you know I, I ask this from a lot of guests and every time we discuss regulation and I'm sorry to ask it from you here. Uh, when do we expect a regulation? When is it coming? And, and if yes, and what is the procedure which is left to be done yet? Yeah, I think uh, 
you know again i would say government is moving with a lot of fear and suspicion so you know when they talk about global cooperation i think that's a long time coming uh, it's uh, i mean there will be cooperation at some point there will be mutual understanding there will be ability to you know sort of look at tax policies across all of these countries where there is high trading activity so all of that will emerge but it's very very important right now i feel for the rbi to come out with you know what exactly it thinks about cryptocurrencies and we for have. tax RBI authorities has. okay and for the uh, tax authorities to actually clarify you know all of these gray sections understanding of you know uh, various aspects of tds looking at costs of acquisition what all costs one can set off right. and of course on the loss uh, set off bit i think these two or three things once there is more clarity once you know these are uh, sort of understood from a taxpayer perspective then things could really improve and and yeah, gst it, uh, hopefully gst should uh, you know could take longer uh, because there are other important burning issues with respect to gst uh, but in terms of income taxes i'm hoping in the next 6 months something should really come out and as you mentioned rbi stance you know finance minister nirmala sitharaman also mentioned it in the parliament where she said that they want a complete ban uh, so that's the kind of you know strong criticism that we hear when it comes to rbi but of course government stance is yet to be revealed we are yet to see where it is headed but thank you so very much for discussing the, all of this and answering all our questions now it's time for us to take a very short break but after the break we are coming up with mcq that's my crypto queries where your queries will be answered by our expert region bhadwaj joins us after the break don't go anywhere hi you're watching coffee and crypto i'm arun singh and now it's time for mcq that's my crypto queries where your crypto queries are answered by an expert we have with us region bhadwaj serial entrepreneur very warm welcome region we have aditya's questions right up at top when will shiba inu rate inu's rate will increase it's a really important question because a lot of people have this question but honestly i don't have a crystal ball and you have to understand that shiba inu is a meme coin meme coins have had their trend that was primarily influenced by doge coin which was popularized a lot by elon musk now it could be a black swan event like a one time occurrence that just happened or maybe it could happen in the future but i have very limited expectations of shiba inu's price going up not at least until the next couple of years okay shaviz is asking pi network real or fake i would say pi network as for my understanding is not entirely fake but it's not entirely real Hmm. because and i, I would also like you to give a, a little introduction about pi network of course they are popular yeah. for the mobile mining thing uh, if you can give a brief introduction to them yeah so pi network like you said is a popular cryptocurrency what they say is that you can mine our cryptocurrency from your mobile so instead of mining through your laptop or your computer you can mine it through your mobile and it uses a lot of affiliate marketing and multi level marketing which means i get referral bonus as well Now the thing is that Pi Network has been existing since the last couple of years, and people have been accumulating a lot of Pi coins from mining. But the cryptocurrency has not yet been launched on any exchange. Mm. From my understanding, if a million people have already accumulated a lot of Pi coins, as soon as it goes up, people are going to dump because people have legit invested their. hardened money and it uses a lot of computing power of your mobile device as well so you see so, it as suspicion yeah i see it as extremely risky and something i would never do because one it's not live yet two i would not want to accumulate of something that is not live yet and which already has a lot of built in self pressure sure the next question how is a graphic card related to crypto mining so initially when we were having the mining part of crypto we were simply able to use it with any regular computer but later on as the mining became more and more difficult hmm. we had to bring in graphic cards and gpus because they have more cores as compared to a regular cpu and this is why graphic cards became popular because they can use they can be used for computing the hash and solving these complex mathematical puzzles and at the same time they can be used to process all this huge amount of calculations that have to be done in a short span of time saila is asking why is india lacking behind in blockchain research and my uh, subsequent question to that would be would you agree and if yes then of course answer his question 
I would agree. I would say it's three way. One, the Indian people think of crypto as a get rich quick scheme. We have to first understand that it's not a get rich quick scheme. It's like a technology, just like any other technology. So it will have its own diffusion of innovation, which means it will have its own S curve for any technology that comes. Secondly, India is not able to get good research because the government has not been very clear on the crypto laws yet. The government has taxed crypto, but the framework or any kind of law policy is not clear. So a lot of people who want to start research are held back by this because they don't want to invest their time and effort into something which tomorrow might get banned. Mm. And thirdly, it's because somewhere we seek a lot of security before diving into something. We want the confirmation from the West world, and then we tend to pick up something. So I think in that sense we are a little bit behind because now slowly we are seeing Westerners. going for the research going for all of these jobs and all the it means so we might pick it up in a couple of years mm-hmm. okay next question should one buy the dip right now so there is never a perfect time to buy the dip you know if you buy the dip the dip will keep dipping mm-hmm. at least that's from my experience so i would say it's good that you can dollar cost average and i personally prefer to create buy zones so for example if i have a firm belief in bitcoin Bitcoin, say for example, under twenty five or twenty five thousand dollars is my buy range. So every single day or every single week, I would put in small money to buy Bitcoin, and this is how I would dollar cost average. I would spread out that money throughout the year so that I don't run out of my capital, and at the same time, I can guess the best price of the week. Sure. Last question: Does cryptocurrency offer anything for the middle class? Yeah. I think cryptocurrency offers three major things for the middle class. One, it offers the education because of cryptocurrencies, a lot of people have started taking interest in finance. So a lot of people have started understanding how money works, and they have started educating themselves about different instruments of finance as well. So education is the first. Secondly, is the jobs that it is creating, the startups it is creating, the freelancers coming in. So it's a huge industry that is booming. And third. it gives people a lot of entertainment so i think of cryptocurrency as you know if you remember the famous dialogue entertainment 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 mm-hmm. so <laughs> even if the first two e's are not being met it has the entertainment for sure sure thank you so very much uh, shrijan for talking to us and now we'll move on to our last segment which is again a conversation and it's about zero fee trading so i read about this that coinswitch has come up with zero fee trading and i was really curious to know what exactly it is and for that we have someone from coinswitch we have parth chaturvedi with us lead crypto ecosystem at coinswitch a very warm welcome parth uh, what is zero fee trading is what i would want to understand right in the beginning Thank you, thank you, Arun, for having me. Uh, so, what we've done is basically like have like a monsoon bonanza of sorts for uh, our uh, uh, users. So we are offering zero commissions for all trades on Bitcoin uh, during the festival period. Uh, this zero fee will be applicable across different uh, you know order types that are available on the platform, like uh, instant orders or limit orders or even SIPs. Hmm. Uh, basically, we want you know people to trade and invest in. Uh, Bitcoin during these times of uh, fear, uncertainty, and what's the uh, term uh, term of this part. offer? What's the term the of part. this offer? It's called zero trading fee, like zero uh, festival. No, I meant the 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 time uh, span of it. I mean, what where, where what are the you know months you're running it in? There must be a so time period to it. So as of now, we haven't decided on the end time. It is on for now. Uh, oh. We will, uh, depending on how it uh, you know proceeds, we will decide on uh, deciding the end time. And why only Bitcoin? So Bitcoin is sort of like a bellwether asset uh, for like the entire cryptocurrency market, and uh, basically it has like almost forty percent of market cap, uh, more or less. And that's why we want to reach this. Uh, we want it to be you know able to reach to the maximum amount of user base. and a lot of user base holds bitcoin and you know if i may ask what are you what is coin switch trying to achieve with this so uh, as you all know there have been a lot of you know setbacks to the industries particularly mm-hmm. in india uh, globally we are seeing like a sell off in risk on assets and crypto has also fallen up a lot uh, particular to india there was there has been a fall in volume after the tds impact and we wanted to pass on you know some of the relief uh, to our users 
so tds impact of every sell order will not uh, will probably feel a little less painful now uh, the zero trading fee will ensure easy entry and exit uh, orders for our users great thank you so very much path for talking to us on this and all the best because every time you know you hear zero fee of course your eyes shine and pop out as well that's what happened with me so i really wanted to understand what what uh, it really yeah. entails thank you thank so you. very much if you were on the sidelines waiting to buy bitcoin uh, now is the time <laughs> okay we hear you thank you so very much uh, path so with this we've come to an end of this show but we'll be back next friday at 6:30 pm i'm arun singh it's goodbye from my side Crypto products and NFTs are unregulated and can be highly risky. There may be no regulatory recourse for any loss from such transactions.